Hi everyone. Today we are going to discuss about theory of constraints. So what do you mean by constraint? Constraint is a problem. Uh, so it's an overall management uh, philosophy introduced by Dr. Eliyahu Goldratt in his 1984 book titled The Goal. That is geared to help organizations continually achieving their goal. The title helps in achieving more of its goal by a very small number of constraints and that there is always at least one constraint. So what is the definition for theory of constraint? A bottleneck is any resource with a capacity equal to or less than the demand placed upon it. A constraint is anything that limits a system's performance relative to the system goal. So for example, if you take it as a constraint, for a preliminary example of the theory of constraint, imagine you are building an electric cars. You have all the pieces except for one key component, the batteries. Due to a material shortage, your company will need to wait an extra month to receive them. So that's a major constraint because we assembled all the parts, but without battery, we can't sell the product to the customer. So the same like that, the battery is very important for the car. So we will wait for another one month. It will be delayed. So it's a major constraint for that particular product. So next we are going to see the process of theory of constraints. Identify the constraint. So where is the constraint happened? Exploit the constraint. Subordinate and synchronize to the constraint. So where is that link? Why it's happened? So we are going to analyze that. Uh, subordinate and synchronize to the constraint, elevate the performance of the constraint and repeat the process. This is the process of theory of constraints. So next we are going to discuss capacity constraint resource. What do you mean by capacity means? So whatever the capacity resources, uh, uh, capacity, you are going to utilize and you are going to achieve the goal or objective. So a capacity constraint resource CCR is the weakest link in a particular process. There are a number of resources that can limit overall production capacity in a business setting, including employees, available supplies, or equipment capabilities. So we are, we are going to discuss with a simple example, capacity constraint resources. Capacity constraints are factors that limit the amount of output that your production system can produce in a given time period. There can be internal, such as equipment breakdown, labor shortages, or quality issues, or external, such as customer demand, supply delays, or market conditions. So these are the examples related to the capacity constraints. So within the organization, that means uh, how many times the equipment breakdown, labor shortages, or quality issues, and external in the sense we are going to suppliers, customers demand or market conditions. So synchronized manufacturing, as we are going to discuss synchronized manufacturing. Synchronized manufacturing, synchronized nothing but linking or connecting. Synchronized manufacturing is a less known manufacturing management philosophy that views the resources and activities of an organization as elements of an interdependent network and manages them in such a way as to optimize the performance of the entire system. So it was developed by Srigan and Ambal in 1997. So we will see the example of synchronized manufacturing. Think of a single checkout queue in a supermarket. Customers are served one after another. The cashier must finish with one customer entirely before serving the next. This linear process is uh, akin to synchronized operations. One task must complete before moving on to the next. Because it's a long queue in the supermarket or departmental stores. So we are going to process all the formalities to that particular customer. Then only you can go for next customer. For example, if you take it as a billing transaction, you purchase all the goods, you can check that billing, and you can, uh, uh, you can receive the cash. Then finally, you can go to the next customer. Next, we are going to discuss very important topic, capacity planning. Capacity planning. So what is capacity planning in operation management? Capacity planning in operation management is the process of balancing demand for a 
good or service to the ability of a manufacturer or organization to produce enough to meet demand. So what about the capacity constraint? No, the same like the capacity planning. Capacity you have to plan for that. Whatever the capacity, I mean that whatever you are uh, need for the resources. So you have to plan. Then only you can go for um, you can go for process. So capacity is the maximum output rate of a production or service facility. So what are things covered under the capacity? Equipment, space, and employee skills. So now we had discussed. You can uh, you got an idea about capacity uh, theory of constraints, capacity constraint resources, and capacity planning. So theory of constraints is nothing but constraints is a problem where it will happen. So you are going to analyze and you can take an action. That's a theory of constraint. Next one, uh, theory of constraint, next capacity constraint. Capacity constraint means whatever the capacity. So it depends upon that you are going to achieve your goal or objective. That's a capacity constraint. Last one, capacity planning. So capacity planning means you have to plan for your activity, you are going to achieve the object or goal. So you can see that. So these are the things that are very important in operations management. So next session, we are going to discuss in depth about capacity planning and the process of capacity planning. So thank you all for watching. Thank you all.